daiquiri or cystorhinostomy or a DCR surgery is the gold standard for the treatment of nasolacrimal duct obstruction. In this video, we are demonstrating an external DCR. After administration of local anesthesia, a J-shaped incision is made over the anterior lacrimal crest. A cat spot retractor is placed to expose the underlying muscles and bone. Rather than cut the fibers of the orbicularis muscle, I prefer to use a blunt tipped instrument like the metal suction cannula to separate the muscles that lie over the bone. Here, this white structure is the superficial head of the medial canthal tendon. It is important to cut this in order to access the fundus of the lacrimal sac. Using a periosteum elevator, the lacrimal sac is then carefully separated from the anterior lacrimal crest and the lacrimal sac fossa underneath. This is carried out right down inferiorly where the lacrimal sac continues as the nasolacrimal duct and superiorly till the fundus of the sac is separated from the bone. Here a suture line is visible. This is the junction of the frontal process of the maxilla anteriorly and the lacrimal bone posteriorly. An instrument like the periosteum elevator can be used to create the initial opening at this site. A bone punch is then introduced and the osteum is gradually enlarged in all directions. Carefully pushing the lacrimal sac away is important while punching the bone. While the handles of the bone punch are being pressed after engaging the bone, it is important to have a rotational movement at the wrist joint to allow for easy dislodgement of the bony fragment. Damage to the mucosa can result in torrential bleeding. Carefully pushing the mucosa down and engaging the bone within the punch is important. Here, the pink nasal mucosa can be seen. But how large an ostium is actually large enough? I prefer to punch superiorly 5 mm above the common canaliculus, anteriorly as much as I can, inferiorly till the nasolacrimal duct is deroofed, and posteriorly till the ethmoidal air cells can be seen and removed. That leaves a large patch of nasal mucosa with which a flap can be made. I prefer to inject viscoelastic material into the lacrimal sac which allows for easy flap creation. Here you can see the lacrimal sac enlarging with the viscoelastic material. A vertical incision is made inferiorly on the lacrimal sac. Superiorly a similar incision is made. Following that, using a pair of Westcott scissors, the two incisions are joined to create a large lacrimal sac flap. One can check the adequacy of the flaps and the ostium by introducing a probe through the puncta. After this, the nasal mucosal flaps are created in a similar fashion. Two linear incisions and using a pair of scissors, the incisions are joined to create a U-shaped flap. I prefer to make only anterior flaps for both the nasal mucosa as well as the lacrimal sac. The posterior edges of the mucosa can be left alone or cut. Here, the nasal mucosal flap has been trimmed. Adjuvants like mitomycin C can be used at this stage. Following this, the nasal mucosal flap is approximated and sutured to the lacrimal sac flap. I prefer three interrupted sutures using an absorbable suture material like Vicryl. Following this, the skin and the orbicularis are closed in layers. Post-operatively, antibiotic drops are prescribed along with steroid drops which are then tapered off. An antibiotic ointment is prescribed to be applied over the wound 